We got dark enough jackets over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the black jackets. Men in black. The New York contingent. It's the New York contingent. What is it? Color we like. We like that color. Team color. We don't know. I go out to play in the Midwest and there. And I see someone wearing black, I said, you're wearing my, our team colors. That's yeah. right. That's right. Black is the new black. Well, we brought on the Japanese drummer at the end, which we thought that would be, that it would work. And not only did it work, but it added a real feel to it that uh, maybe would help Japanese people relate to this, see one of their own out there beating that drum like that. He was beautiful. Yeah, he was wonderful. Great. He was incredible. Yeah, we, our set was improvised, and you never really know what's going to happen when you improvise, but I felt like there was definitely a spirit there oh, that yeah, kind of was, took over. Really. I, I don't know if it was conscious or choice. I don't think those are the right words, but something definitely magical happened. Yeah. Hal Wohner and I, we, we were working with poetry of uh, Allen Ginsberg, and, and images of Harry uh, Smith uh, and uh, uh, Ginsburg and Smith were uh, people who uh, were older than us, but uh, we all lived through uh, 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 a very complicated time in history uh, where our, our two cultures, which have been the Japanese and the American culture, have been very close, even when they were when they were not not emotionally close, they were still close, and, and that closeness has continued. I thought, we thought that the poetry in the film was, uh, would be, I would say, evoke the kind of empathy that uh, two, two nations could, uh, could feel, both individually and, 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 and in a community way, you feel both personally, and then you feel it socially. But you, have, you have both of those. That's the dimension. And uh, uh, Alan would have, would have been here. And maybe he was here. Well, we did his work. And Smith, I felt the same way. You yes. know him too, didn't Absolutely, you? Yeah. yeah. And they were here. Yeah. There's no question. They were very, uh, they were the best of American culture in a way. With the, the, in terms of their open heart and their, their vision of humanity. Well, that's how we did that, so. They, uh, <laughs> the first computer calculator watch I ever saw was uh, somewhere in Tokyo. And I was in Tokyo, and I got on the subway for three hours to go to this one store that had this one calculator watch. Um, <laughs> I bought the last one. I mean, now it's very common, but, but at that point, that was the only one. I realized how much I had in common with anyone who had built a thing like that. And it's stayed that way. Through the, uh, I love to go to Tokyo and go to the Electric City. That's where I spend a lot of time to this day. In those days, they used to say, Sony for Sony, meaning don't mix, that doesn't apply anymore. You still have that watch? No. I gave it to Phil. I gave it to a fan. Oh, that's awesome. No? Well, I remember, uh, uh, I don't know. a performance of a no drama in Kyoto, in Kiyo Mizudera by night, by torchlight. Mm -hmm. And that was something. That was really something. And I lived there 10 years oh. off and on, so I had a lot of experiences. <laughs> but I will pick, if I pick one, I think that may and be the one. He really speaks Japanese, yeah. so no, they, they have to be a little careful around him mm -hmm. about... Uh, Everybody was very nice today. This <laughs> 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 I, I have one story. I. My first concert there was in the 1980s, and I was over with my group, and <coughs> the first thing that happened is that and people weren't paying so much attention to us, but we, we set up and suddenly we were surrounded by, oh, a dozen people with cameras who, who, who uh, 
they, they photographed every position of our community because they were going to have to set us up in another city. So they, they did that, and then the year after that, they were able to do it. We played our first piece, a piece from 16 or 70, an early piece, kind of a tough piece. And we stopped, we started and stopped very suddenly. We stopped, and everyone just sat there. No one said anything. <laughs> so then we played another piece, and then we played another, and no one did anything. And at the end of the concert, we got up, and then everyone applauded. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we understood that there was a kind of, uh, they weren't sure what to do, maybe, or maybe we interpreted as respect. Yes, yeah, I've seen that at hardcore concerts too. Yeah. No applause in between songs, yeah, and it's absolutely. respect. It was. We interpreted it that way, and we were surprised. We didn't had never met an uh, audience like that before, but uh, we got into it, and by the end, we got the the, the ovations. That was really funny. I, I learned one short story in um, Japanese for a show, and. Uh, and it was very hard to learn because it's it's such an intricate language. And so, um, at the end of the, the show, the promoter came up and said, "Thank you very much for for speaking in Japanese." And excuse me, I am very sorry to say this. And so you have to apologize. But you do have you, your English is very good. And I said, oh, <laughs> "Thank you." But in Japanese, you have a slight stutter. And I said, "What? What do you mean?" And he the as it turns out. The person who had made the tape that I had completely oh, saw had a very slight stutter. Just t -t -t -t. So if there was a tutsu, there was tutsu, and, and that's how I did it. Oh my god. <laughs> and so the worst part was I had some other concerts to do after that, and I couldn't unlearn the stutter. I learned it only. Or even know which parts really. were stuttering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just the sound at that point. Yeah. Classic. Oh my god. And the other things I remember were some of the most beautiful concerts in a bamboo forest of just people knocking on bamboo. You moving through it at night, and that was an incredible, incredible sound that I've never heard. Out, you know, all of this percussion outside in this very dense, dense forest near Kyoto. 